America Ferreira is in the town of La Esperanza, Honduras, investigating the history of her father's family. I'm meeting up with Dr. Suyapa Portillo, a historian of Latin America. I'm curious to find out more about my great-grandfather, Gregorio Ferreira, because I'd always heard rumors about him being a general, and it sounds like they might be true. You know, the, the archival records in Honduras are in very poor condition, mm -hmm. uh, mostly due to a lot of political instability. So it's been really difficult to find anything on Gregorio Ferreira. But fortunately, uh, we did discover one document Is this the original? It's the original oh, wow. from 1895, okay. <laughs> so just um, handle it with careful. some care. Um, so it says, it's a census done by the mayor de San Jerónimo mm -hmm. in 1895. And I know, where is that? <laughs> San Jerónimo is just outside of here. It's a town oh. in the department of Intibuca. Oh, I see someone named Ferreira. Sebastián. Sebastián Ferreira. Wow. Is that related to me? Or is there another Ferreira? Um, keep going down. OK. So there's a Gregorio here. Is that my great-grandfather? That could be your great-grandfather. And here they said he was 14? 14, 14 years old. In Correct. 1895. So he must have been born in 1881. He had, I guess, 15 siblings? This document doesn't actually list the relationship between the people listed here, but usually the heads of households were listed first and then the offspring. So the first two names in the house are Sebastián Ferreira and Gregoria González, who were 60 and 50. And it says Sebastián was married, so probably to Gregoria, which probably. means Sebastián and Gregoria might be my great great-grandparents. Most likely, they are the, your two times great-grandparents. Wow. So for Sebastián, under the category of profesión or oficia, profession or trade, it says labrador. What does that mean? Labrador is a farmer. I guess the question that comes up is how did Gregorio go from being, you know, the son of a farmer <laughs> to being a general. I do know a local historian nearby that can answer more questions. If you like, I can take you to him. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. It was really surprising to see the original document that seemed to indicate that my great-grandfather's family were farmers, that there were many children. You know, they didn't live in a big city, and those are quite humble, rural beginnings. So I am curious about how he went from that to General Gregorio Ferreira. Suyapa so is taking me to the town of Jesus de Otoro to meet with local historian Evelio Inestrosa. Suyapa so tells me that Evelio is a guardian of historical documents here in Honduras and has been collecting them for decades. He encontrado mucha documentación sobre Don Gregorio Ferreira, pero esta llama Eh, mucho la atención. Nombres de varones en una escuela? Sí, es claro. Es. La escuela de varones. General list of students enrolled in the elementary school for boys located in this town and monthly dues paid to the teacher. <laughs> and the first name is Gregorio Ferreira and the parent was Sebastián Ferreira. So Sebastián was his father. That's awesome. Confirmado los documentos. Confirmado. <laughs> Gracias. This is the same year as the census, 1895. Sí. Sí. En este año, um, Gregorio tenía 14 años. ¿Sabes si es común que un varón de 14 años todavía está en colegio? No es común. A esa edad, generalmente, ya se encontraban ayudándoles como fuerza de trabajo a sus padres. Mm en las labranzas o en cualquier actividad que tenían. Quiere decir que para Sebastián la educación era importante, ¿no? Era muy importante. It feels like a very um, personal connection. I know that for both my parents, a big reason that they went to the United States was for me and my siblings to get an opportunity to have the best education possible. So it seems like it runs in the family. <laughs> Me interesa mucho qué hizo mi bisabuelo con la educación que su papá le dio. Sí, le damos, hemos dado seguimiento. 
y hemos encontrado información. El monitor era papel nacional. Era un periódico nacional. Periódico. In 1908. So it's been 13 years since the last document. Oh, it's here. Nuevo empleado. New employee. Uh, the head of internal revenue for Intibuca, Don Gregorio Ferreira, will be lending his services to the government in its current campaign. It was agreed upon that Mr. Ferreira will leave his office under the supervision of Don Rafael Pineda. So this is the announcement that he was leaving his position as the head of internal revenue. A public office. Public office. He was office. leaving a public office to join a military campaign. To join a military campaign. Very cool. And it was published in the national newspaper. So by 1908, he was 27. Wow. So he was quite accomplished at 27. Yep. There's a lot on him. Hay mucho sobre él. Su vida de que yo nunca sabía nada de esto. Y eso nos da mucha información. Él pertenecía a un partido que era el Partido Liberal y era leal al presidente. Right. El presidente hay una amenaza de, de ser derrocado por fuerzas eh, invasoras. Entonces él acude, eh, a, a, acude a defender ese gobierno. Probablemente lo hizo por voluntad propia. So if he was of the Liberal Party, what would that mean in 1908? So there were um, two political parties, the Liberal Party and the nascent Nationalist Party at the time. This was at the beginning of a civil war period between the two political parties who would arm themselves and vie for power, sometimes militaristically, not just through the ballot box. This civil war was closely tied to the growing popularity of Honduras's main export, the banana, following the fruit's introduction into the U.S. around 1870. Honduras inspired the term Banana Republic because of the extraordinary influence U.S. banana companies had on politics there. Bribes, kickbacks, and shady politics resulted in policies extremely favorable to the U.S. exporters and detrimental to Hondurans. In 1908, the Coyumel Fruit Company backed a Nationalist Party threat against Liberal President Miguel Davila, and Liberals like Gregorio Ferreira took up arms in support of the President. Well, now I just want to know what happens next. <laughs> These are the documents that are found here in this region, and the best thing to do now is to go to the National Archives of the Nation in Teucial, Honduras, where you can find more information. So there is document of his life in the nation's capital. I'd like to know why. 